Greetings! I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to build this little M8 armoured car. This is a 15mm or 1 100th scale kit made by Normandy Miniatures. They are a new manufacturer of wargaming kits, and this is one of their first two releases. The other being the Jagdpanzer IV that I built a while ago. Link in the description and in the upper right corner now. As with that Jagdpanzer kit, the reason there isn't a box to show here is that I was very generously sent one of these sprues from a review copy that Fog of War was sent. I will post a link to his recent video on the same kit below, and I would highly recommend you check out his other videos too, they're very good. Consider giving him a sub. No, not a submarine, though I'm sure he would like that. Subscribe to his channel. This kit can actually build both the M8 Greyhound and the M20 Scout car. Obviously because you can see it here, I've chosen to build the M8 with the turret. We'll talk more about it later. For now, let's look at the sprue. The model comes on a single sprue, not surprising considering it's 15mm scale and it's not a very big vehicle. The parts on these sprues are fairly neat. The mould lines are there of course, but they're not too bad and were easy enough to deal with. The details, to be honest, aren't the best. Not the absolute worst though. There are a lot of parts that are quite a bit softer looking and more rounded than they should be. That's going to be a bigger problem for some than others. The main gun is moulded on the sprue at a weird angle. It sticks up and out of the sprue frame. It probably wouldn't take too much force to either break this, or at least twist it off the sprue and possibly lose it. That would be annoying. The sprue also includes some crew figures. These are pretty poorly detailed, but it's still nice to have them. I won't be using them on vehicles, but that's because I don't usually use crew figures anyway. I'm sure they could come in handy for another project, maybe somebody observing from inside a building, or something like that where it won't be super visible so the details don't need to be that good. That might be enough waffling on my part. You can see the bits on the sprue and make your own judgments. Because this was a review copy and I haven't bought the retail box, the only thing I've got is the sprue. I was however sent a PDF of the instructions and you can see that here now. I would assume the instructions you get with the retail box aren't photocopies, but this works well enough for me. It looks pretty simple and straightforward to build, so let's get to it. Starting with the wheels looked like a sensible choice, so that's what I did. Both Fog of War and myself had a little bit of concern with how the wheels would go on. The half hole mounting points don't really look like they would hold the wheel in place very well. They went on much easier than expected. Can't complain about that. I did use quite a bit of glue here. I don't really know if that helped or not, but they stayed in place pretty well. They do look a bit more chunky than I think they should, but they look decent enough. Once all six wheels are in place, why not add the upper hull? I'm sure you could think of reasons not to, but I'm not listening. I've already done it. There's a little bit of keying for this, and it goes together pretty easily. Of course, a little bit of pressure was needed to help keep the gaps at bay. I strongly suggest applying the pressure to the bottom of the hull and not the wheels. Otherwise you might break them, or at least bend them out of place, and nobody wants that. I did still end up with a bit of a gap at the front of the hull, but it could be worse, and I'm already counting on needing to use some putty on this model, so I don't think it's too big a deal. There's a big gaping hole in the rear of the hull, and we can cover that with, surprise surprise, the hull rear part. There's a pair of raised guides on the back of the rear part, or on the inside of the rear part if you prefer, and they more or less lock the part into place on the hull rear, making this very easy to do. This is the point where you need to decide if you want to build the M8 or the M20. I'm building the M8 as you've already seen, so the next thing to add is this little plate which will go over the crew compartment. There's a ring that goes into the top of this plate for the turret to mount onto. I test fit it and couldn't get it back out again, so that's where it stays. The bottom of the plate is shaped such that it should nicely and easily fit into the top of the crew compartment, and it does. Though I did have to apply a fair bit of pressure here, again pressing on the whole bottom and not the wheels. It fits well enough, though it does seem to sit slightly higher on the vehicle's left side. It is good enough though. I then attach the skirting. I'm led to believe this is optional, but I feel like the M8 and M20 look much better with it in place. It's fairly simple to get these parts into place. 
They don't lock in, but it's easy enough to see when they're in the right spot. Unfortunately, the fit is a little bit gappy for all three parts. Some worse than others though. That is, all three parts on each side. There's six in total. I accidentally nicked the front one with my knife, resulting in even more of a gap there. But it's okay, I'll fix it before I paint it. Then it's time for hatches. It looks to me like the upper hatch part should go into place first, so I do that. The fit isn't perfect, but it is okay, though I did find I had to apply a lot of pressure. These were certainly better than the hatches on the Normandy Jagdpanzer. The forward hatch part goes on next and it fits just about as well as the upper part. Apply a little pressure and it goes into place, though maybe not perfectly. The hatches are definitely not completely flush with the hull, but it could be worse. On the gaming table, you'll probably never even notice. Next come the headlamps. These are big and chunky, but that's kind of par for the course in 15mm scale really, so I can't really fault Normandy for this. In fact, I'm pretty confident I've seen worse headlamps. The reason these kind of details are often quite big and chunky is so that they don't just break right off the model when you handle it. These are designed to be handled after all. The headlamps, by the way, are easy enough to install. I nudge them around until they look like they're straight and then they're on. And that is the hull completed. Very hully. I'm not sure what those holes on either side just behind the fighting compartment are. Maybe they're antenna mounts. The instructions don't mention them at all. I suppose if you wanted to, and they are in fact antenna mounts, you could add your own made from some thin wire or something. Anyway, let's whip up a turret for this little vehicle. The turret body and bottom part aren't keyed, so it's a bit fiddly to get them together neatly. You kind of have to eyeball it. And it doesn't really fit that well, despite my best efforts. I mean, it's not that bad, but it's not great either. Then comes the machine gun ring. This has three little mounting tabs that link into three notches around the upper rear of the turret. These make it pretty simple to put into place. It does look a bit big and chunky, but that's not so uncommon in 15mm scale anyway. Next, I decided to add the main gun. This is pretty simple. It more or less just slots right into place. It does have what appear to be some ejector pin markings on the front of the mantlet. If that's not what they are, then I don't know, but I'm pretty confident that they shouldn't be there. Oh well, I'm sure they can be fixed. I finished the turret off by adding the machine gun. There are four tabs on the bottom of this that are supposed to link onto the gun ring. The fit isn't quite perfect, but it's good enough. The gun itself isn't especially detailed. Just like the rest of the turret, I suppose. That's okay though, it'll probably look fine on the gaming table. I then put the turret onto the hull. The fit here isn't super great either. The turret seems to want to sit a bit high or just fall right off, neither of which are great. I'm sure I could take care of that by filing down the pin a bit, I just haven't gotten around to doing it. At any rate, the Normandy Miniatures M8 Scout car in 15mm scale is now complete and ready to go scout out those hidden Germans. I know some people are just going to hate these models. It seems like perfection is expected from everything, which just isn't how the world works. Personally, I think it's not a bad little kit, though obviously it's not going to win any awards in the fields of detail or sharpness. It's a lot like the Normandy Jagdpanzer IV in that regard. However, like with that model, I'm willing to cut it some slack because it's Normandy's first kits. I'm pretty sure they'll improve as time goes on and they learn. That's how things generally work. They recently had a Kickstarter for some more modern French vehicles, and from what I've seen it looks like they've already improved their processes. So I think Normandy Miniatures is off to a great start, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they offer in the future. It's fair to say that this M8 isn't the most perfect model, but it still does a more than adequate job of representing an M8 on the gaming table. You can easily tell what it is at a glance, and that's what it's meant to do. So in that regard it works perfectly as intended. You obviously wouldn't buy it as a detailed display piece, and that's not what it's meant to be. The build was really quite quick and easy. The instructions I had were easy enough to follow and most of the parts went together as they should, though there were a lot of things that needed the application of pressure. That's okay too. I mean, I usually apply a lot of pressure to a lot of models, so it's nothing out of the ordinary. It was so quick and easy to build that I actually built both of the Normandy kits I had on the same day. 
I've been keeping this one in my back pocket for when I don't have enough time to film a build and still have the video come out on time. I rather like that this kit gives you the choice to make either the M8 or the M20. Who doesn't like having options? I do hope that's something Normandy are planning to continue with their kits. That would make them more useful for gamers, who are definitely the target audience. I feel like this model is going to be helped significantly with the application of a bit of putty and then some paint. That does usually make little grey lumps of plastic look better. Go figure. And I think once that's done it'll make a fine addition to my US Flames of War Force, which is small and incomplete, but growing. Slowly. So, what do you think about this kit? Would you have built it as the M20? Have you heard of Normandy miniatures before? What would you like to see them make in the future? Let me know in the comments section below. Also, feel free to leave any other questions or comments you might have there too. I do so enjoy hearing from you. And if you've not done so already, why not subscribe, follow, ding the bell, and all the other things you do on YouTube and social media. Links to all of the things including my Patreon and my merch store are in the description below. And as always, I shall return soon, so until then, be excellent to each other, and thanks for watching. Farewell.